Coming up this evening on NTD Business. Silicon Valley billionaire and advisor to former President Trump, Peter Thiel, is leaving the board of Facebook parent Meta. What could be next for him? Chipmaker NVIDIA and Japan's SoftBank calling off what would have been the biggest computer chip deal in history. Why did the deal collapse? And the biggest marketing day of the year is coming this Sunday. How are businesses in the crypto space taking advantage of it? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Great to have you with us. Paul Graney here live from New York City. The biggest computer chip, computer chip deal in history is Toast. U.S. chipmaker NVIDIA will no longer acquire British design firm Arm from SoftBank because of reported regulatory challenges. Arm makes the technology that is at the core of pretty much every smartphone processor, counts nearly every major chipmaker as its client, but the deal, valued at around $40 billion when it was first announced in 2020, faced immediate pushback. Qualcomm and Microsoft, which both use ARM technology, opposed the deal. Concerns were that if NVIDIA owned ARM, it could favor its own business to the detriment of ARM's many other clients. In December, the Federal Trade Commission sued to block NVIDIA's acquisition of ARM on antitrust grounds. Now, SoftBank says it plans to take ARM public in the next year or so. SoftBank's stock today was little unchanged, while NVIDIA was up less than 2%. And Peter Thiel, one of Facebook's earliest investors, a nearly 20-year board member, is quitting the company. He's reportedly going to work on advancing former President Trump's agenda instead. Thiel is worth over $2 billion, according to Forbes. He's a co-founder of PayPal and Palantir. That's a tech company worth over $25 billion. Back in 2016, he campaigned for Trump and was part of his transition team. Here he is back then, just before the election. It's not a lack of judgment that leads Americans to vote for Trump. We're voting for Trump because we judge the leadership of our country to have failed. Thiel is also an investor in Rumble. That's a YouTube alternative that calls itself a protector of free speech. Trump and other conservatives accuse social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter of censorship. This allowed platforms like Rumble, Parler, and other new entrants to gain market share. In fact, Trump is set to launch his own social media site soon. It'll be called Truth Social. He's even tapped former Congressman Devin Nunes for CEO. Here's Nunes recently talking to the Epoch Times. Our mission really is to, number one, get a social media site that, so that the American people and people around the globe have a free and open internet again. Right, which is what we don't have because of all the social media companies and things that they've done. There's no indication Peter Thiel will work directly with the Trump campaign or with Truth Social. Reuters sources say he'll focus on helping candidates who support the Trump agenda get into office. We emailed Mr. Thiel for comment, but didn't hear back just yet. Staying with Meta, if you're in the European Union, you could soon lose access to Facebook or Instagram. Meta warned about it recently, so entities Evelyn Lee asked why Meta would even think about exiting such a big market. People based in Europe might lose access to Facebook and Instagram. Meta said it would pull these platforms out of the EU if it can't transfer user data back to the US. But is that really enough reason to give up such a big chunk of its market? Daniel Castro is the vice president at the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation. He says Facebook needs to transfer data for its basic services, like connecting friends in different parts of the world. Maybe one in the United States and one in Germany, and they want to, you know, comment on each other's pages or or send messages to each other on WhatsApp or like another's post on Instagram. This is data that's still being transferred transatlantically. But what do these platforms know about you? Social media platforms know about the users' likes, dislikes, Um, the type of content they're interested in. Most of the time, they also know when the person is vulnerable, when it's feeling depressed or happy. The EU's data protection law called GDPR was put into place in 2018, but many are still not sure what it means exactly. 
the EU struck down another privacy pact that regulated intercontinental data transfers, and regulators have been stuck since. But besides big tech, this affects many more businesses. Uh, let's say there's a company headquartered in Chicago, and they're trying to um, you know, hire someone who's based in Paris. They can't do that because they can't send the um, HR information back to their headquarters in Chicago. And many businesses are trying to comply but aren't able to because of the way regulators interpret the law. Just recently, an Austrian court ruled that the use of Google Analytics was illegal. So NetDoctor, a website that works like millions of others, as well as the European Parliament's COVID-19 testing website, breached GDPR. You know, you could say that every business is in compliance and no business is in compliance because it really depends on what the regulators say. The existing statutes make it almost impossible for them to adhere to the law by letter. Now, whether or not the regulators come down on them um, remains to be seen. Kevin Curran is a leader of the Cybersecurity and Web Technologies Research Group at Ulster University and co-founder of an encryption service. He says with huge fines in case of GDPR breaches, Meta is looking at its bottom line. Nevertheless, Meta pulling out of Europe seems unlikely to him. Um, I, I just can't see Meta pulling out. It would, it would literally half their market size overnight as such. So. He says it's more likely about politics. Meta owns some of the most used social media platforms in the world. And Curran says lawmakers are wary of that. Evelyn Lee, NTD News. The Neil Young Spotify saga continues. Young is now telling Spotify employees to quit their jobs at the firm before it, quote, eats up your soul. The singer criticized the streaming platform's CEO Daniel Ek, calling him the big problem, not podcast host Joe Rogan. Young said Eck pulls the strings and accused him of caring only about numbers, not art or creativity. A couple of weeks ago, the singer accused Rogan of spreading false information on his podcast about COVID-19 vaccines. Rogan denied the claims. So Young told Spotify it could choose either him or Rogan, but not both. Spotify chose Rogan. He is the most popular podcaster on any platform. And bike maker Peloton is shaking up its business. The fitness company is replacing CEO John Foley, effective today. Barry McCarthy, former chief financial officer at Spotify by chance, and Netflix too, he'll take over. Foley will stay on as an executive chair, but Peloton is laying off about 2,800 corporate employees. It's also reducing the number of warehouses it owns and operates, but the on-camera instructors and content won't be impacted by the changes. The initiatives may suggest Peloton is planning to stay independent, maybe. It's after reports Apple, Amazon, and Nike were all exploring bids to buy the company. Peloton shares actually jumped 25% today on the news. The Super Bowl. One of the biggest events of the year, not just for sports fans, but also for advertisers. While many of us like to avoid watching ads when we can, you could say they're part of the main attraction for the Super Bowl. People aren't just watching to see the Rams take on the Bengals. They also want to see the commercials companies have spent millions of dollars on. And this year, cryptocurrency exchanges are among the big spenders. So what are they trying to achieve? Who are the major players? And... What messages are they trying to send? Adidas Chenny Wu has more. Kyle Lowry! Our next bid by commercial is about missed opportunities. So many Canadians wish they bought tech stocks or real estate just 10 years ago. What's happening again with crypto? Bingo! Crypto ads will be flashing on people's screens this Super Bowl Sunday. This year's ads can cost companies up to $7 million for 30 seconds of screen time. And crypto exchanges like Coinbase, FTX and Crypto.com are willing to pay despite declining viewership. Canadian crypto exchange Bitbuy will air this commercial in Canada's broadcast. What's happening again with crypto? Bingo! Here's the idea. Kyle Lowry has missed over 6,000 shots in his career. Don't be like Kyle and miss your opportunity again and again and again and again and again. Seriously? And again. Yeah. And again. Definitely the biggest uh, marketing investment that we've ever made as a company in terms of signing on Kyle and in terms of buying the airtime. 
but we felt that it's a worthy cause because, uh, you know, the audience is so large. Charlie Aikenhead is the vice president of marketing at BitBuy, one of the largest crypto exchanges in Canada. Aikenhead says crypto is still in the early stages of growth and BitBuy is trying to get its name out there. What better way to make a big splash than, um, you know, the biggest advertising day of the year. Cryptocurrency exchanges are places where people exchange normal money for cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and vice versa. The exchanges generally get a small fee for the transactions. I hate to say this, but I do fear there's a great deal of herd mentality here or the greater fool theory. Fergus Hodgson is the director of Econ Americas, a financial consultancy. Hodgson doesn't seem to be a big fan of crypto. If you're advertising with the Super Bowl, you're going to everybody. Every man and his dog is on there. And so that is, I hate to say it, but suspicious. You're going after people who are not financial experts. But the world's biggest crypto exchange, Binance, isn't advertising during the Super Bowl. It put out this ad featuring NBA star Jimmy Butler. You're going to hear some of the biggest names telling you to get into crypto, but they don't know you or your finances. Only you do. Binance and I are here to tell you, trust yourself and of course, do your own research. And where can you do your own research? There's a couple places they can go to, one being um, Udemy, and they can go and definitely uh, find a couple of uh, crypto uh, uh, courses on crypto investing. There's Trading Heroes, uh, there's Coin Academy and Cryptoversity, and they could go to several of these. Desh Waragoda is the CTO at the Mortgage Bank of California, where Goda says the ads remind him of the dot-com bubble back in the late 1990s. I'd definitely recommend reading up and educating yourself before uh, do, um, you know, going into uh, and investing in crypto. The Pew Research Center says 86% of U.S. adults have heard of crypto, but only 16% have actually used it. Chen Yi Wu, NTD News. Wall Street ended higher today, the Dow rising 372 points by one and one-tenth of a percent, S&P 500 gained 38 points by eight-tenths of a percent, the Nasdaq today gained 179 points by one and three-tenths of a percent. Ten-year Treasury yield hit its highest level in more than two years, perhaps in expectations the Fed will start tightening monetary policy even faster. Small business owners aren't feeling very optimistic right now. In fact, the new report says their confidence fell to an 11-month low in January, according to the National Federation of Independent Businesses. Owners say they're still struggling to find workers, something we've known for a while. But here's something new. Half of the owners' surveys say they are planning to raise wages. That is the highest number in 48 years. So who's going to pay for all of those higher wages? Over 60% of the businesses are raising prices. That's near five-decade high. Among the industries, customers in wholesale, manufacturing, retail, and construction are more likely to see higher prices. But despite the difficult conditions for business owners, there were more new business applications in 2021 than in any other year on record. 5.4 million, 50% higher than in 2019 before the pandemic. Many new business owners went out on their own after losing their jobs as the pandemic hit. Others, after getting time to reflect as the world changed around them, decided to change too and quit their jobs to start a business. So we're joined by one of those business owners now, Kat Gilbertson in Minnesota. Kat, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Kat, you are now the franchise owner of six Pro's Nail Salons in Minnesota. It was just last year you, you, you started it. What gave you the motivation to, first of all, quit your job and go out on your own? And number two, give you the motivation to start in such a time as during a pandemic? Great question. Um, it's kind of something I laugh about sometimes that there's probably not a more interesting time in the world for me to uh, quit a very stable job and start a business. Um, but how I got here, I think, is you know, the pandemic changed a lot for a lot of us and that forced kind of slowdown and stoppage of life as we know it and caused me to re really reevaluate what it is I want, what I'm good at and what I want my future to look like. And so, you know, I, I believe in timing and the right opportunity with a great brand and up and coming brand came across my desk and I dove in with both feet. And I think, um, you know, navigating that through a pandemic is, 
adds an extra layer of complexity that I think makes the story even more interesting. But um, being an entrepreneur is something that I had been passively working towards most of my professional career for just shy of 20 years. And um, the, the pandemic and the changing world around me and my family dynamic changing very quickly just kind of gave me the push I needed to jump in. It was a pretty big decision for you, I assume. You know, you're working in a, in a nice job with Apple, managing retail stores for Apple. I'm sure all the benefits and add-ons a, a girl could wish for, right? And, and this was a significant investment for you. This didn't come cheap either to, to, to get into. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you settled on your decision? Yeah, I think, you know, it isn't, it isn't a decision you make overnight, right? As I... Um, I've been an aspiring entrepreneur for some time, and I had dabbled into a small business of my own um, during a maternity leave after my twins were born, and I knew that I had started a fire that I couldn't put out. Um, and I'm a big believer, believer in timing, and I think this opportunity came at a time when I was ready to jump. Um, as you mentioned, I worked for Apple for some time. I'm at work for Target Corporation behind before that, and so I spent that just shy of 20 years learning from some of the best in the business um, and had, you know, put aside some money, some capital investment to to buy in big. But I think that, that biggest decision was um, I have three very young kids um, as the provider and breadwinner for my family, really had to have the confidence in myself uh, to make sure that I could make this something that could provide for all of us and more uh, very, very quickly. How has that felt along the way? Because we had things like lockdowns, uncertainty about the pandemic, new variants, et cetera. You had kids at home, you had money invested, maybe even thinking back to your previous life, working for someone is a little bit more certain. Can you can you talk us through some, some of your feelings throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, if I told you there wasn't a sleepless night or two, I would absolutely be lying. Uh, but that kind of high risk high reward lifestyle. I guess it's it's just kind of ingrained into my personality. It, it certainly isn't for any everyone, um, but it it makes me jump out of bed in the morning knowing that it's up to me how successful my business is going to be today. Uh, working for really large successful corporations that that impact every day wasn't as big as, as my impact is now. And so, um, yeah, so like I said, has there been anxiety? Has there been sleepless nights? Absolutely but I'm also thriving in the condition where I get to write my own story. Um, and that I really love that there's like, I, you know, there's some complexities about as new variants come out and, and lockdowns and how I'm going to navigate that and how I can treat my employees the right way and how I was treated um, being a part of some of the largest organizations in the world um, and making sure that I'm bringing that on a small scale into my own business as well. We see a lot of states lifting some restrictions now. Are you feeling optimistic, hopeful about the future? You feel you, you've come through the worst of it. You're stronger for it, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, as a people, we're all excited to get back out there and find that normalcy, right? And, and the environment around us is allowing us to do that. And I think in this line of business that I got into, you know, the beauty industry, people, People want to get out there, feel great again, do do the things with their girlfriends they haven't been able to do for a long time. So, you know, in Minnesota, January, February time, we all kind of hunker down, right? But come March and we start getting these these nice days around here, everyone explodes out of their homes. And so um, I'm very optimistic and very excited to see what the spring holds as the pandemic is starting to slow down at least um, and look like there's a more positive outlook as well as the weather around us changing, we are incredibly optimistic about what's what's ahead. Kat Gilbertson, Pros and Ales, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. With that, we're going to take a quick break, but still to come. American Express is launching its first digital checking account for customers. You can even earn rewards while you spend. A Nike sneakers designed by a late Louis Vuitton creative designer are being sold at an auction. This is the first time ever Nike and Louis Vuitton have officially collaborated. That and much more coming up on NTD Business.
Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, CEO of MyPillow. Cancel culture has not only affected myself and MyPillow, but also millions of you out there. My employees and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for all your support. At MyPillow, we have hundreds of products now, including my new slippers, bathrobes, sleepwear, and my new beds. We are offering the best products ever for the best prices ever. For example, we have the standard size My Pillows, regularly $69.98, now only $19.98 with your promo code. Or you can get custom fit with my premium queen size My Pillows, regularly $79.98, now just $29.98. Or my king size, regularly $89.98, now just $34.98. So go to MyPillow.com now and use the promo code on your screen or call the 1-800 number below to receive these exclusive offers. Thank you and God bless. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. The 2022 NTD 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition will be held at the Merkin Hall of Kaufman Music Center in New York City. The competition is honored to have specially invited vocalists with the world-renowned Shen Yun Performing Arts to serve on its panel of judges. The gold award is $10,000. The 2022 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition. For more information, please visit vocal.ntdtv.com. Welcome back. The Internal Revenue Service is halting a plan that would have required taxpayers to verify their identities with facial recognition before they could use certain services on its website. Change comes amid backlash from lawmakers and privacy groups alike. The technology has come under fire over privacy issues and other potential dangers. IRS says it'll instead use an additional authentication process that doesn't use facial recognition. Didn't explain what that process will be. The agency had previously planned to require the new verification process starting this summer. Users would have had to take a picture of a photo ID, then take a video of themselves using a smartphone or computer. A company called IDMe provided the technology. It currently verifies identities for 30 states, unemployment bureaus, and a growing number of federal agencies, too. American Express has launched its first digital checking account with rewards. Debuted its card to U.S. customers today. Excluding businesses, any customer in good standing is eligible. No fee or minimum balance. Consumers using a checking account debit card can earn one reward point for every $2 spent. The deal also includes an annual yield of half a percent on balances. The account will be included in its app. Extra perks include purchase protection, 24-hour customer service. Just last year, American Express launched a digital checking account for small businesses called Cabbage Checking. 200 pairs of Nike Air Force One sneakers designed by late Louis Vuitton creative designer Virgil Abloh are being sold at auction. The Sotheby's sale will benefit the Virgil Abloh Postmodern Scholarship Fund and today's Andrew Thomas has more. This is the first time Nike and Louis Vuitton have officially collaborated, making the sneakers extremely rare and valuable. The American auction house said interest in the sale has been tremendous. So the, the interest has been tremendous. Um, we're currently at around $6.1 million in hammer price. Um, we had estimated for the auction a total of uh, $1 to $3 million. So to be at $6.1 million with you know, quite a bit of time left in the auction. It doesn't close until the 8th, so there's still more than a week. I would say that the interest has been tremendous. Virgil Abloh was considered fashion's highest profile black designer and had been the creative mind behind Louis Vuitton's menswear collection since 2018. At the time of his death in November 2021, 
The French luxury goods giant revealed he had been battling cancer privately for years. The U.S.-born creative also worked as a DJ and visual artist. Actually having an official product that is, you know, the Louis Vuitton and Nike collaboration on the Air Force One, it's really bringing together two of the great, you know, Goliaths of industry. And of course, you know, the genius of Virgil Abloh, um, who so many people love and respect and miss. Um, and so bringing all three of these worlds together is really an incredible thing, which I think is driving global interest. In July 2021, LVMH had expanded Abloh's role, giving him a mandate to launch new brands and partner with existing ones in a variety of areas beyond fashion. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. And a pub claiming to be the oldest in Britain is closing. Ye Old Fighting Cocks, just north of London, claims it's been open since the year 793. If that's true, it means the establishment survived the Black Death Plague that ravaged Europe in the 14th century. It's such an institution. We've created that. It's an award-winning pub. Um, that was always my dream, so it's really hard to let go of that. The owner blames COVID-19 for making conditions too difficult for the pub to remain open. But he admits things were getting tough even before the pandemic. In fact, a quarter of UK's pubs closed between 20, 2008 and 2018 as people ditched them to drink in restaurants or at home. The old fighting cox is named after the 11th century building it's located in, which used to host cockfights. Guinness World Records previously recognized the pub as the oldest in England. The company retired the title in 2000, but determined that records were too old that are too old or impossible to verify. And that's the latest business updates for today. You can still catch NTD Evening News with Stephanie Cox. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For NTD Business, it's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.